Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and today we have got the review that many of you have been asking for and that is the review of the new Asus Pro Art Monitor uh, and I'm actually comparing it against my ISO Color Edge CG318 4K monitor. These are both 4K monitors but there is a very large difference in price between these two monitors with the Asus monitor being uh, pretty much half the price of this particular ISO. This is my ISO. Let me just give you a little bit of a background here. This is the ISO that I use day to day for all my retouching post-production work. Now Asus uh, emailed me and they said, hey Carl, um, would you be interested in reviewing one of our monitors? We'll send you one, you can keep it. Um, and I thought, oh, sounds great. But you know, I said to these guys, look, when we do a review, we give an honest, re honest review and we have to say what we see and what we feel. So if you don't like the review or you, you're not willing to accept a review that's bad, then come and take this monitor away because we're not gonna be interested. So they said, no, we, we, we've got a lot of confidence in our monitor, which was a good thing. And uh, they said, we think uh, it's gonna turn out pretty well. So uh, they said, you're welcome to keep the monitor. So I said, okay, so I'm um, not getting payment for the video, for the review, just getting to keep this monitor. Now, uh, that's whether it gets a good or bad review. Now, let's tell you the first thing. Let, let's get down to the stuff you really wanna know. First of all, um, the key thing here is that this particular uh, Color Edge uh, CG318 uh, 4K monitor comes in at a retail price of about 3,500 pounds. Now, that's gonna be somewhere, I think, around about 4,000, 400 US dollars. This thing comes in at only 1800 pounds. So you're looking at about 2100 dollars. So it is literally half the price of the CG318. Now the CG318 is actually it's still available I think but it's been upgraded or superseded now by the CG319 which is even more expensive. That's 4000 pounds which is going to be about 5000 so there is a big difference in price between these two monitors. Is there a big difference in quality? Do you know what? Amazingly, no, there is not. This Asus monitor is actually superb. I was very, very impressed with what I saw here. It is not as good as the ISO monitor, but it is damn close, okay? And I'm going to run through some of the key features and the reasons I think that the ISO is still the winner but the reasons why I think the Asus is excellent value for money. Now let's take a look at some of my notes that I made whilst using. I've been using this monitor for the last um, four or five days, getting familiar with it, getting uh, to use it, and uh, see so I can really see what I think about it. Now, uh, to make this test absolutely fair, I've got the Asus monitor into that MacBook Pro, and I've got the ISO monitor into another MacBook Pro, both running Photoshop, both exactly the same image files, got three or four image files to look at. And the reason I've set it up on two laptops is because sometimes with Photoshop, when you're using two screens, um, in a sort of daisy chain format. When you jump from one to the other, the color profile sometimes gets mixed up. So I thought it best and fair if I calibrated both monitors and set them on two separate Macs. So that's what I've done. Now, uh, let's take a look at the specs. This is a 4K monitor. It's a 32 inch screen, this is the Asus, and it has a pixels per inch of 138. So it's a very, very sharp monitor with an overall resolution of 3840 by 2160. The ISO is slightly smaller at 31.1 inches, it's also 4K, but it has a 4096 compared to 3840, 4096 by 2160 um, actual pixel dimension, and it has 149 pixels per inch, so slightly, slightly better resolution, but it's not discernible visually. I can't see any difference visually between the two. The Asus has Thunderbolt 3 ports in the back. As a matter of fact, I've got it connected in a Thunderbolt 3 port into a USB-C Thunderbolt port on the MacBook Pro, uh, and that's what I'm using for the picture signal at the moment. The ISO 318 uh, 4K does not have Thunderbolt. Um, both monitors do 100% of the sRGB, 
Um, this monitor, the ISO, does 99% of the, um, the Adobe RGB, and Asus claimed 99.5% of the Adobe RGB. I can't notice any difference again between the two. There is some things we're gonna to come to on color though afterwards. 95% um, on DCI-P3 um, profile or gamut, and 98% on DCI-P3 on the ISO. Contrast ratio, 1000 to one. Contrast ratio, 1500 to one, but again, not really too discernible to my eye in using both monitors on the same image. Both monitors support HDR or have a HDR feature or HDR gamma can be put in on this. Um, we have two Thunderbolt ports, as I said, on this one. Four HDMI ports on the Asus and uh, only two HDMI ports on the ISO, but still enough. And a USB hub on both monitors so you can plug accessories in off of the USB ports on, on the back when you've got the main USB going into your computer. Now, they, uh, they, they both have tilt and swivel stands. Let's just take a look at that so you can easily spin the monitor. You can raise it up and down and you can tilt it. Now, I've got to say, the Asus stand is actually uh, a little bit smoother and a little bit easier to turn and tilt. So I actually really like the Asus stand and I like the sort of silver chrome metal look. So I thought I was very impressed with the Asus stand. I was also very impressed with the Asus thin frame around it. Looks very stylish, looks very nice. The ISO one is a little bit thicker. Um, picture in picture is available on the Asus and I'm pretty sure that's not available on the ISO. Um, we also have a paper size thing, so if you want to display for proofing documents and stuff like that, that's available on the Asus. Not something I think I'm going to use very often. Not something though that's available on the ISO. Um, there is a grid on the ISO for safe areas for video. There's also some grid options available on the Asus. These are all accessible through uh, the menu system uh, within the monitor. Now, let's move on to something that's really important to my workflow, and that is calibration, okay? Calibrating the, the monitor is essential. Now, I love on the ISO that it has a pop-down calibrator built in that takes care of the calibration for you automatically. You don't have to do anything at all. It just sets the calibration over a given amount of hours. I think it's usually 50 hours, and then it will do a recalibration. Now, on the Asus, it's a little bit more uh, complex. It will set a reminder to do a calibration, but calibration comes in the form of this X-Rite i1 calibrator that comes with the monitor. It comes with it in the box. The Asus has its own calibration software that you load or download from the website and put onto your computer. And that allows you to plug this X-Rite uh, calibrator uh, device into the monitor, calibrate it, and you've got a number of options on the calibrator. So you can do a standard straight calibration where you just calibrate from the middle of the screen, or you can do what's called a uniformity calibration where you actually calibrate different zones of the screen. And you could do it in a three by three zone, or you could do the more complex five by five zone calibration. And that takes a lot longer, is a lot fiddlier, and is a bit of a time consuming effort to be honest, but it will give you the best uniformity. That's that sort of equal luminosity over the whole screen area. Now I ran every calibration. I ran the standard one, I ran the three by three, and I ran the five by five just to experience them all. They all worked and they're all fine, but I have to say that the uniformity, and this is an important one, the uniformity on the whole screen overall is definitely better on the ISO. It is very good on the Asus. It's better on the ISO, but the ISO does cost twice the money. Now, uh, while we're talking about calibration, this is important. I tried uh, calibrating. Um, I even tried some custom modes. I also looked at all the other profiles available, the Adobe RGB, the sRGB standards, the HDR, all of those. Did my own calibration and we're now working on it in my own calibration and that's in the ISO calibration. The Asus, in my opinion, runs a tiny, tiny little bit pinker, a little bit more magenta than the ISO. It's very, very small. You'd have to be quite good with your color to notice it. 
You may not even be able to notice it on screen now. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but I would say the ISO is slightly more neutral. Now, one could argue, well, maybe the image is meant to look more like that than it is like that, but actually, I don't think that's the case because I've reviewed a number of different images of mine that have been proofed and printed before that I know what they were like when they're captured on the Hasselblad in the Focus software. I'm pretty sure this is how they're um, reproduced when it comes to print reproduction on them. So in my opinion, the ISO calibration is a little bit more accurate and the Asus is very good, but it runs a tiny, tiny little bit magenta or a tiny bit little red. Now, I did actually go into the Adobe RGB profiling and you can manually adjust. So they have a six axis hue saturation adjustment within there where you can reduce the reds. And I tried that on the Adobe um, profile and it worked quite well. I could just take that little tinge of red off of there, but it doesn't seem that's something you can do on your own user calibrated profiles, which would make sense because it's assuming that the calibration means it's exactly spot on. So uh, as it stands at the moment, I think this is a perfectly workable, usable monitor. It's very high quality, uh, but if we're talking about very, very fine accuracy on calibration, then the ISO also wins on that by a small margin. Um, now, if we go back to uh, a couple of other small features, the ISO comes with a hood, okay? The hood is designed so that if you're working in an office environment with downlighters, that it's gonna stop any glare hitting the screen. The Asus doesn't come with a hood, but having looked online, it does seem there are hoods available for it, maybe from third parties. There's no speakers in the ISO monitor, but there are two small uh, three watt speakers in the Asus, and I believe there's also an earplug jack input port as well on the Asus. Um, the menu system on the Asus, I find a bit fiddly. It's got this very fiddly little toggle switch on the back, and it took me a while. See, here's the part of the problem, you don't even know where it is. Here it is, yeah, see I flick it, and then you think, oh, you don't know which way to go, and you don't know which way to go with the buttons. So it's, it takes a while getting used to this menu. And then once you figure it out, it's okay. But they've got all these other menu buttons at the back that, that, that seem to duplicate some of the toggle switch ones. But one of those menu buttons is the on off switch. And I found it all a bit unintuitive and a little bit fussy to use on the menu system. I much prefer the ISO simple um, touch screen um, menu uh, on the front and um, with you know, clearly details what it is, clearly see it here, and um, much easier to use. So for me, the ISO menu system wins um, on that one as well. The Asus has a three-year warranty, apparently, on the panel on the screen. The ISO has a five-year warranty on the panel on the screen. Um, but let's, let's get back to the key things here. The key things are, is the Asus monitor good? And I have to say, yes, it is very, very good. It is exceptionally good value for money. When we're talking about spending, you know, 3,500 pounds, which is like, I say, 4,300 or whatever dollars on this monitor, compared to spending 1,800 pounds, which is about 2,000, 100 US dollars on that monitor, you really do get a fantastic monitor for your money with the um, Asus uh, ProArt 32UC monitor here. So uh, from that perspective, it's very good. Now, let's talk about the detail. When I'm looking at the detail and I'm zooming in, and I'm looking at, uh, so this is a, these are a couple of images of mine, well, it's the same image, but this is the Im image of mine. We're at 100% on that image at the moment. And I'm looking at the fine detail, and I go in at 100% uh, on this monitor as well, and I move it around. The detail is superb on both monitors. So then the next thing that I look at is let's take a look at highlight detail, shadow detail, and all of that. Highlight detail, shadow detail is recorded perfectly, no problem at all there. If we look at shadow detail, I think there is actually a little bit more detail in the shadows on the Asus monitor. It seems that I can see a tiny little bit more information in the shadows on the Asus, but on the overall impression of both monitors at the same time, again, the neutrality of the ISO seems to win for me. Now, if you're on a tighter budget and an ISO is out of your reach, then I would say the Asus is the best monitor I've seen for the money. 
Am I giving up my ISO? No, but will this Asus make a welcome addition to our studio? Yes, it will. I may even adopt this monitor uh, for one of the other members of the team for retouching. So uh, it is that good um, as a monitor. Now, let's just think, uh, let's just take a look at, sorry, a few other images and let's see if we can um, allow ourselves to see uh, some of the things I'm talking about. So I'm going to move over to another image, which is another image that I shot, getting confused over my mouse here. Here's the same image here. So this is the same image on uh, both screens. And again, if I'm looking at the skin tones here, tiny, tiny bit pinker, slightly more neutral here. The other colors across the board are pretty good. Shadow detail, highlight detail is all good on both of those monitors. Let's move on to the next image. And I've got this, I've zoomed right in on this model's face on this shot. And again, looking at the skin tones, a little bit pinker on the skin tones on that monitor, a little bit more neutral on this monitor. Now, um, to test this and to be absolutely sure, I also set up the, um, the screens of the monitors to be just both the plain neutral gray screen. And you may even be able to perceive from the video shot here that this one looks a tiny bit pinker than the ISO does. It's not bad, it's only a small amount. One other thing with the uniformity that I noticed, now this may not be a long-term problem because sometimes when you buy monitors new, these type of monitors, they take a while to settle in. And I've only been using this one for about four or five days. But if I look at the um, ISO, it's uniform perfectly throughout, right into the edges across side to side. What I did notice on the Asus, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of lack of uniformity around the edges. It goes a tiny little bit darker in at the edges on the side. Not the top here, because that's the shadow that's part of the MacOS menu system. But in on the edges, a tiny little bit of feathery. It is only minimal, and it is reduced when you look at the monitor square on. So it may actually be a viewing angle thing, because when you're viewing from here, you're viewing straight in. But when you look at that way, you're obviously viewing it in an angle. But it's not something that I noticed on the ISO monitor um, in a uniformity um, situation. I also set up a couple of control strips, what I can call control strips like we used to use in the lab, where our varying levels of white down to dark gray and then down to black. And I've got that on this monitor as well. So this is pure black, this is pure black, and then we've got um, going slightly off black and then all the way up to white. And again, you may be able to pick that up, that up on the video. When I look at this one, it looks uh, a little bit more neutral. This one, a tiny little bit red. Um, th th this, one of the things with color though, is when you're looking at color, it's like when you look at that one for a long time and you're working on that one, and then you look at this one, this one maybe looks a little bit green. Um, so, you know, it, your perception of color is relative to the color you're surrounded with. But um, I know from working with my own images, I know from, you know, shooting my own images and knowing what everything looked like at the capture stage, uh, that I think uh, this one is, is slightly more accurate. And as I say, with the reproduction on the printing as well. That's not to say this um, isn't uh, good. As I said, it's a very, very good monitor. And also I found the Adobe RGB setting profile in here to be very, very good. And I could also go into the six axis hue saturation and make adjustments within uh, the colors on there as well. So for further information, you can also, I found this great website, it's uh, www.displayspecifications.com and you can do side-by-side -side comparisons of the manufacturer specifications uh, against different monitors. Now that's not these guys saying that one's better than the other, just lists all the specifications that each manufacturer uh, lists, giving you obviously the pixels per inch size, the type of panel, the features, the um, inputs, outputs, all of those things. So that website is a good way of doing a comparison of all the features on both monitors. Um, so that's a pretty good roundup of both monitors. Um, as I said, the detail is fantastic. The price is exceptional. Both of these companies also make more expensive monitors. Um, they have even higher end ones. As I say, the, uh, color, uh, the color edge, the ISO has the new uh, CG319 monitor that's out now. And I believe there's an even higher spec Asus monitor in the lineup as well. But if you're looking for a large 
31, 32 inch screen, 4K monitor uh, as a retoucher or a professional photographer where uh, color accuracy and detail, tonal resolution and all of those things are important to your workflow, then I can highly recommend the Asus as being an excellent value for money monitor. <laughs>